Hey Lens Crew, how's it going? Bertan here. So today we are doing a different video. As you guys can see, I'm not wearing any colored contacts. My lightning is different, my setup is different, everything is different. Today, I will be having a conversation with an old bright color patient who got complications from the implant and now she regrets having them getting them done from the first place. I'm disappointed heartbroken, I feel like my dreams are taken away from me. <laughs> Such first world problems, I know, I know, but, but before I go into the details, I just want to explain how and why I found her. So many of you guys ask me on my social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or through YouTube messages or comments, due to the nature of the videos that I make, I do color contacts reviews, would I consider bridal color procedure? Would I get it done? What do I think about it? Do I suggest it? Am I against it? I gave some vague answers to those questions. Uh, to be honest, I really didn't know what to think. And at the first place, I was like, I'm not getting this done. Because I did not think the implants were realistic. They were one dimensional. They did not have the depth, in my opinion. In real life, maybe they did, but from the pictures that I've seen, it wasn't what I was looking for. But quite recently, they launched their 3G colors that look amazingly natural, extremely, extremely detailed and natural looking lenses, uh, implants, sorry. And I was like, I guess it's time. I'm getting this done. It was going to be my 30th birthday gift to myself. I was gonna go to India with my girlfriend get this implants done. And I was going to take you guys along the journey with me I from the procedure all the way to the recovery time. However, things did not go as I planned. I was going through YouTube videos because I was like, I'm like so excited about this. I'm making color selection. Um, I actually wanted to see Torian Green's video again because I talked with him on Instagram, he's an extremely, extremely nice guy, nothing against him. He did not have any complications, so more power to him. Her, his implants are in perfect condition. I wanted to get the exact same ones done. I just want to see his video one more time. That's all I intended. So I just searched Bright Ocular and I sorted things with the upload time. Because I just want to see the most recent videos because his video was one of the recent ones and I come across Patty's video. The thing is, you are not gonna find her video when you just search Bright Ocular because you are going to be preoccupied with all the amazing videos that Bright Ocular has. Hers does, does not stand out. But with the filters that I had, somehow it showed up and I watched her video. My heart went to her. She suffered so many complications from the surgery that she had done and I wanted to help her in any way that I can. She just posted one video on YouTube. She doesn't have subscribers. And when on YouTube, when you don't have subscribers, your video is not going to be displayed on the recommended settings. And she cannot reach out to as many people as... Um, I, I have a small channel, but as many people as I can, or even bigger channels, they can reach out to a lot of different people. So I just wanted to have a conversation with her and share that with you guys so that you guys can form your own opinions. Before I go into the interview, there are two things that I want to mention. I do recognize Bridal Color and Stellar Devices, a limited liability company, as uh, United States legal entities that are protected. I do not intend any character deformation against this company. This is just me having a conversation with that person going through their own subjective experience. Neither me or Patty have a medical training that is necessary to evaluate such operation or like tell you not to do it or go get it done. We do not have that medical education. This is just going through someone's experience from the beginning to end for awareness of the things that you might not have heard before, talk about the complications that can happen and what could have been done to avoid them, if there's any way to avoid them, or maybe you shouldn't have, you should not get the implants. Like we are just gonna talk about these in a very subjective manner, 
just our, these are just our own opinions. I will try to be as objective as I can as the person who is asking the questions, but do not expect the same from Patty because she is going through a lot now. The second thing is, please, please, I know uh, when I post lens reviews, usually my videos show up on people who search for those lenses, but this is such a controversial topic and I know it's gonna attract some trolls. Please do not judge Patty, me, or anyone who has done or planning to get these implants. Yes, it might come across as superficial. Yes, it might come across as stupid. However, think about everything that you have done since you were a kid. From dyeing your hair to wearing a corset, fake eyelashes, I don't know, stuffing your pants if you are a guy. We all want to be perceived as attractive, beautiful, handsome, sexy, whatever you want to call it, one way or another. Some of the measures that some take might be more extreme than others, but that does not make them stupid. Maybe more vulnerable, but not stupid. So please, please do not judge Patty or me or anybody else. And if you are a contact lens wearer, you might not think this is a good idea, but at the same time, contact color contact lenses are, were not very recommended in the early times either. So I'm just putting it out there for awareness. Please be respectful down in the comment section and think about what this person might be going through before you jump into the judgments. I know I talked a lot, but I thought it was necessary to have this intro because like I was planning on doing a completely different video guys. I was going to announce that I'm gonna get this surgery done. I was so excited. <sighs> Anyways, we are in a different stage right now and we will have this video. I know I talked a lot. I will just cut it here and we will go straight into the conversation that I had with Patty. All right guys, so now I'm going to start having my conversation with Patty about her experience with the bright, in, uh, bright ocular implant that she had done over two years ago, I believe. Before I start asking her questions, I would like to tag some of my friends who have a bigger following than me because I think as people who are posting videos on YouTube for other people to watch our contact lenses, the audience is the same. Bright Ocular is targeting the people who would like to change their eye color one way or another. So I would like to tag Ms. Ladiva, especially Ms. Ladiva because she is an assistant in an ophthalmology office clinic, I believe. Fonz Evil and Erica, please either share this video or Patty's her video or make a video yourself talking about what you think about Bright Ocular or whether you would suggest it to your audience or not. Okay, so Patty, I'm just gonna start asking you some questions now and let's start with getting to know you. So who is Patty? Uh, what is your occupation? Do you have any kids? Where do you live? Where are you from? Well, Patty is uh, from Mexico and I've been here in the United States for like 20 years. I have two kids and I'm stay home mom. I stay here, take care of them and school and blah, blah, blah. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go way before you got the bright ocular surgery. So what was your natural light color? My color was kind of greenish, uh, hazily, bluish, brownish. It was kind of beautiful. It was it changes color depending what I, what I was wearing. It mm -hmm. was kind of beautiful, but it wasn't that beautiful as this one, the bright ocular one. This one is just amazing. Gotcha. So you had hazel eyes. Let's just call them hazel because yes, it's hazel. a multicolored yeah. color. And you mm -hmm. tried colored contacts before you did the bright ocular surgery, is that correct? Long time ago I did, but they, they don't look that real, like bright ocular. Right. And by an accident, I just got into the bright, bright ocular webpage because I was looking for contact lenses and I just, by an accident, I was Googling it and I was like, wow, I never heard about it. I was just blown. I was like, no way, that that's way too good to be true. And then I started Googling it, and then mm -hmm. here I am. 
So you saw all those beautiful images of people that they post on the on their websites, Instagram, of course, and on YouTube. So you yeah, but like you said, it was a while ago, so it wasn't that much uh, mm -hmm. that much uh, people would not know how much damage they're causing to your eyes. So a few years ago, people they were like, "Oh, okay, it was new." I think they started in 2014, something like that, or maybe a little bit before. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So people would not know now. As a lot of people are doing it, so now we do know how much damage is doing. Okay, so when you decided that you wanted to get the implants, did you discuss it with your family, with your husband, and what was their reaction? To tell you the truth, I lied to my husband because I knew he wasn't going to let me do it. I told him I was getting LASIK. He believed me, and to my family in Mexico, I told them the truth. Mm -hmm. They could talk to me for, for a while. It's Patty, that's just, you're crazy. You're just, you're just crazy. And I said, you know what? I don't care. That's just awesome. I've always been obsessed with, with eyes, always, all my life. My mother has really beautiful blue eyes, and everybody's like, when you're a kid, like, oh, you don't have your mother's eyes. And everybody's just a stigma, like, and it makes you feel bad. So, mm -hmm. yes, I don't have my mother's eyes. So I was, I had the opportunity to have my mother's eyes, mm -hmm. and my family didn't talk to me for a while. They were so upset about about that. But mm -hmm. eventually, they start talking to me. But I haven't tell them what I'm going through because they're gonna tell me I told you so, and I do not want to hear I told you so. I don't. So they don't even know. Maybe they will see this video and oh well. Gotcha. Okay, so you decided to keep it to yourself um, and because you didn't want to hear any negative experiences. And for those who cannot relate to Patty, I was born in the United States, but I was raised in Turkey. So when we look at the countries such as Latin America, like Mexico, uh, and South and East Asia and Middle East, where light colors, uh, colored eyes are very rare, they are mm -hmm. celebrated a lot. It grabs attention, and they yeah. are a sign of attractiveness. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And Patty has very European features, and she thought by having light colored eyes, she would just accentuate it as much, and, you know, she would get attraction and positive reaction from people which I believe you initially did when you get your implants, right? The reaction was positive. Everybody thought that you were very... It was awesome. It was just awesome. When I did my full makeup and my hair and everything, I used to... Actually, that motivated me to go out because I usually stay home and mm -hmm. and then I knew if I put my makeup and people, they're going to look at me and they're going to tell me. Everybody's like... Oh my God, those eyes are stunning because they have a really particular color. The color is ice gray, that's the name. Nobody else has this color. It's just double take. When they see me, people they look at, and I just love the attention. Love it, love it, love it. So it was just awesome. It was like a high on self-esteem. It just, just make you happy, happy, happy. And now they're going to fall that took one out. It's just destroying me because it was just, everything is gone. I, I, it is gone. It hurts. Yeah. So let's go to how you actually got the implants. Um, so you contacted Bright Ocular through their website, I believe, that and tell, told them that you're interested in the procedure, right? Mm -hmm. And who did you talk to? Like, you don't need to give me names. You probably don't remember. It's been a long time. And how did they welcome you? What did they tell you about the procedure? Did they warn well, you about the complications? They, they, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I, I was just asking if they warned you about the complications. Well, what I did it was just the web page. It's just, like, it's just so professional. Mm-hmm. If you go to the webpage, brightocular.com, it just makes you feel like it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. You're going to be safe. Nothing is going to happen to you. It will be approved here in the United States, which it's not going to. 
And it just make you feel like, well, yeah, this, it is too good to be true, and it is, it is. But I, I fall for it. I believe it. Mm-hmm. And and then and then I just did my my research, and like I said, it was a while ago when people didn't have any troubles with this. Mm-hmm. So they called me, and and I mean, it was just a long process, but it was all a lie, a lie, a lie, and I fought for it. Like I said. So, as I told you guys, by the way, I'm talking to my audience. I was going to go through it, go through this procedure, and I'm a new patient, so my experience was different than Patty's. I contacted them with an email. They sent me a booklet of instructions mm-hmm. and the doctors and you know potential risks and complications. Who is a good mm-hmm. candidate? Who is not a good candidate? And a, like you know list of post protocol procedures mm-hmm. that you need to follow. So did you receive any information like this? Like Yes, let me tell you, they emailed me all that, but mm-hmm. in any procedure you get, even when you cut your finger, you right. get like a risk of infection or anything you get. Correct. And um, everybody everyone, every doctor tells you you got a risk of whatever any procedure. This, this page is the same thing. They tell you, mm-hmm. but they don't tell you how high is the risk. Gotcha. It is really high, super high, but they, they're not going to tell you your risk of infection or rejecting or anything is that high. They're not. There is a business, of course. They're just making money and they mm-hmm. just take the money and bye-bye. So, yeah. So let me just give a little detail. Based on the document that I received here, it is mentioned that the groove structure as is U.S. patent approved, and uh, the implant itself is made with FDA approved materials. So this is something that you guys need to pay attention. Materials that the implant is done are FDA approved. Ma- the implant itself is not. Yet, yeah. maybe in future it will, maybe it won't. No one knows. And that something having U.S. patent does not give something any sort of medical creditability. I can create my own pencil box in a mm-hmm. specific design, and I can get a patent for it. So just mm-hmm. to let you know. And these are like you know all informed in this document. But of course, mm-hmm. as a patient, you are excited about this. You are reading them, but you don't really pay attention to what they mean. Please. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, everything you're saying, I did. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I think that what they're saying is like the materials, they're approved because it, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it's silicon that the thing is approved, but I'm, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're so right. They're misleading you. They take like, like whatever they can to make it better, take like shortcuts and of people course, marketing. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to add into what Patty said about potential complications. Any sort of implant that you will have in your body, whether it's exactly. breast implant or a prosthetic because you are losing a certain part of your body or maybe it's even a transplant of a certain organ I have yeah. people in my family that had you know organ transplants there is always a chance that your exactly. body might mm-hmm. reject this material organ prosthetic so when it is your arm inside your arm or inside your body the the, the rejection is by like, you know, it will swallow, you would feel certain pain, but eyes are a sensitive organ. This is a cosmetic procedure, yes, and it's okay to market it as a cosmetic procedure, but mm-hmm. as a consumer, you should be aware of the fact that this is not like breast implant. You are putting an implant in your eyes, and there are risks associated with it. You need to study those risks, and see if you are willing to take that risk or not. It will be your choice. So when it comes to breast implants and other implants, all these sort of structures went through an FDA approval process as well, but it takes years. It's not like, you know, in a year, in two years, 
in five years, there needs to be, I'm not a medic, medically educated person, but this is just from my, you know, common sense and, you know, my awareness. There needs to be clinical studies done on groups. It needs to be experimented on animals, humans. I know Bright Oakler uh, says that they are ex they have experimented this on animals and they had no issues, but these well, are not shared with any other medical association. Who knows? Who knows if yeah. they did it or not? So that, just to let you guys know about that, I just want to point that out as well. So uh, okay, let me just go to my questions here. So you decided mm -hmm. to get the implant. You went, did you went to your ophthalmologist office to talk to your ophthalmologist about this, that you are planning to get these implants? Uh, no. No, because everybody, I knew, everybody just told me, like, buddy, no. And, and everybody's like, no, no, no. And I did not want to listen. That was just so beautiful. And I was so obsessed about beautiful eyes. Mm -hmm. Like, the stigma, like I said, about my mother. And it, I just didn't want to ask. Because I knew the answer. No, 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 don't do it. So I was like, yeah, I don't care. I'll do it anyways. So how did you respond to the requirements they have? Because there is a bunch of requirements here that, you know, that says your medical history. Are you prone to having a glaucoma? Is it in your family? What are your eye measurements? So how were you able to provide those evidences that you're eligible for this procedure to bright ocular? Well, here... Um, here in the United States, I, uh, I went to the, to the doctor. I didn't tell him why, what I was doing, but I got a lot of testing in my eyes, of course, like every single thing you can do. Mm -hmm. And um, they gave me uh, copies of it, and I uh, sent them to the doctor. Okay. And actually here they told me my eyes are really healthy, and they, they measure my uh corneas and my um, iris and whatever, I, I'm not sure, but I sent all the information and and they said it was, it, it, it was okay, but um, yeah, but here in the United States, they, every doctor here, they'll tell you, mm -hmm. don't do it. So and if you course. do, I'm not going to take care of you. Right, that is they absolutely won't. true. That's actually my experience with opt my ophthalmologist as well. So you decided to keep it to yourself again, and you just got your tests done as they requested. You sent it to them, and they said that you're eligible. You are a good candidate for this surgery. Like your doctor. Yeah, my doctor did, yes. Yeah, like the bright ocular doctor. Okay. So let's talk about the first day of the operation. So you flew to Mexico, which is a different experience for you because it's your home country. It's not like, you know, you travel to a country that you don't speak the language of or you feel foreign. So you went to, went to home. And mm -hmm. you met with the doctor, and you ended up having the procedure. How was the procedure? Like, you know, because they claim that it's pain-free, it is uh, just very quick. It is pain-free, completely pain-free. It was just like, in a second, it took like less than 10 minutes, and it didn't go all the way under anesthesia, just a little bit like sedation. Mm -hmm. And all the doctors here, they told me, my doctor did everything right. He put all the implants, everything right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. What was wrong is that implant. It's a piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. Your body is, is rejected. It, it, it shouldn't be in your eyes. It shouldn't be there. But yes. my doctor in, in Mexico did everything just like actually supposed to. Okay. What is wrong? They're not supposed to put that in your eye. Your body rejected the material. It wasn't like, you know, the placement or any yes. surgical technical mm -hmm. technicality. And I'm assuming, you know, when you first get the implant, your body is not going to immediately reject it. So your doctor did the first checkup. I mean, your surgeon in Mexico did the first checkup after the implants. And she, he said that, you know, here are your drops. Use them and mm -hmm. you are good to go, right? I mean... I've been with many, 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 many doctors, and I usually have uh, like inflammation in my. They usually all the time been kind of red, both of them, red, red, and like finally when my mom and my dad and everybody talked to me when I went to my hometown in Mexico, it was like my mom is like, "Patty, your eyes are red most of the time. They're like look, they're beautiful, but they look weird and." 
I keep going to check them up, and they said it's the inflammation, inflammation uh, in Mexico. When I go, I, I go to Mexico all the time, and I get them checked up here. But the doctors here, they don't want to do it because they wash their hands because they don't want any liability or nothing here. Yes. So they, they just told me it's like uh, your pressure, uh, your eye pressure is just getting high, little bit by little bit. But I was in denial. I was in denial. I was like, oh, okay, whatever, sure. Were you and using then, any sort of medication for, to, for inflammation, like to reduce the inflammation or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was helping a little bit, but it was a time bomb. I mean, with the medication, it did help a little bit, but yeah, it was ready to explode, and it did. It did explode, and I'm paying the consequences, and it's not fun. Plus, yeah, it's just painful. Painful just, mentally. Mm-hmm. I just want to clarify one thing that Patty just mentioned. The doctors in the United States don't, don't want to deal with it. Because here's the thing. Here in the United States, I'm not sure about any other country. I know about my hometown, our home country, Turkey too. This procedure mm-hmm. is not approved. I know it is being done in Turkey. It is in this book. But it is not approved by Turkish Ministry of Health. Mm-hmm. In, in my country, unfortunately, regulations are not that strict. So people can get away with it. So Mm -hmm. it's in Mexico. Uh, And the doctors here risking losing their licenses if they associate themselves with a non-FDA approved procedure. There is no way for a doctor in their right mind to tell you, okay, you can go ahead and get this procedure done unless you have some sort of iris in anomaly or anything like that so i just wanted to clarify that so your eyes are red your family is like okay your eyes are red they look beautiful but it feels like you are not healthy you keep using your drugs then you came home to united states after a while yeah. how long did you stay in mexico after your implants were done um I usually go, go it's hard to tell because I usually go there the summer and I come here and then go and come. I just come and go all the time. Gotcha. But yeah, um, I'm not sure. I cannot tell you for sure that, but I, it, okay. yeah. Fair enough because it's your home home end anyway. Yes. So again, this is, a, this is probably an updated document. It might not be the exact same one that you have received. Here it states that uh, on the aftercare protocol, let me just find it really quick because I don't want to give people the wrong information. (laughs) Okay, so day seven, after a week uh, that you got this implants in, you need to go to an ophthalmologist to get your eye evaluation for inflammation, intracular Ah. pressure, and endotrial Ah. cell count. Did you talk to an ophthalmologist after you came to the United States and get these tests done after seven days? No, after seven days. I, a little bit after that. Mm-hmm. But um, it wouldn't matter, like the, the like uh, my doctor says here. It, it, it wouldn't really matter because even if I get the, my um, check at uh, seven days or 20 days or three days or right after or whatever, mm-hmm. the damage, it was going to eventually go, 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 and go, and go, and it's going to eventually end up in these eyes, like this. Can you see them really good, Bob? Yes. It, it's closed. We cannot see the details, but we can totally see that in one eye you have the implant, the other one looks dark yeah. brown, yeah. black. Here's another question, because you said that you had inflammation and it was going up, up, and up. Did you feel any discomfort or pain in your eyes while this was happening? No, not at all. Actually, uh, it was climbing a little bit by little bit, but it wasn't that bad mm-hmm. until uh, one of my checkups, because like I told you, I've been doing my checkups. Mm-hmm. And How often doctor, are you getting the checkups? Sorry to interrupt. How often are you getting checks, checkups? Like every six months, every three months, every two months? Um, I cannot tell you, but I was, I was doing them. I mean, okay. um, you were following the protocol. Pretty yes, much. I was. Yeah, uh-huh. different times. But one of my checkups, um, I went to to this doctor, and this doctor told me. Actually, it was this doctor who does LASIK surgery, mm-hmm. and he told me, 
Patty, your eye pressure is 58. You should be right now in a lot of pain, crying with a big headache in the hospital because 58 is just a lot. It should be like, I think, something between 9 and 20, 21, something like that. So he told me, the next day, you have to go to the hospital, Patty. You, you cannot be like that. You cannot. So the next day, I went to another doctor and then sent me to Utah because they have experts there. Mm -hmm. And finally, my eye pressure ended up being on, at 70, which is a lot. I think it was a lot. So, so they cannot like, explain what, why they, I was in pain. Did they tell you what is the normal pressure should be? Like, as far as I know, it should be between 7 and 20, right? And yours were was up in 50, 60, right? Yeah, it got up to 70, but it should be like between, that, I'm not, I don't know for sure, between 9, and it, I think it has to be below 22. And the highest I went, it was 70. And this so, just happens because I want to inform our audience well here, this just happened out of nowhere. Like you, you had high eye pressure throughout your checkups, but it was never that high, right? Like, or like- It wasn't that high, it wasn't that high. It was little bit by little bit getting high, high, high. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I was on denial because they're just so beautiful and they're just like, it broke my heart when they took this one out. Um, that one, yes, the other one. Yeah, not this one else. So I was like, oh my God, it just broke my one heart. Second, and guys. I'm so sorry, Patty. My girlfriend just it. came home with the dog, so we will have to take a quick break here. Okay, that's fine. Come in, baby. So I apologize for the sound, guys, but I will just keep going. As I said, this is just a conversation that Patty and I are having with like some of the questions that I have and you guys might have as well. Mm -hmm. So... You, your eye pressure was going significantly up. Then you were getting this pressure checkups. Did any of the doctors told you that, okay, Patty, you are having, your pressure is increasing time and time again. You need to take these mm -hmm. out or you need to do something about it. Did they tell you? Then, then it increased and then it went up. So it was like a game. Oh, okay. It was like a game of like, oh my God, I got it uh, down. And I was like, yay, yay. Next time I went there, it's a little bit up. The next time, it's a little bit down. So it was like uh, excited, and then uh, it is hard to explain. Uh, playing with my heart because it's like well, they're not playing, but it was like happiness, sadness. So it's just like uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And guys, you get attached to these implants because, as Patty oh, mentioned, yeah. she was getting a lot of attention, lots of compliments. And sometimes we can be in denial. In her situation, her pressure was not stable. So she didn't know what to do. One time it's low. So she's like, okay, great. I can keep the implants. The other time it's high. She's like, oh my God, I might end up losing them. So she doesn't know. And after a while, how did you find out? Like, you know, how did you find out that you need to take them out? What, like, what happened? What triggered the moment that you are like, okay, I need to take these out? You said the eye pressure. To the doctor here, told me. Why did you um, go to that doctor? Like you know what? Um, why did you decide to go to that doctor? Oh, that one I was talking before. Like I wanted to do LASIK and do my checkup. Oh, okay. And that's the one he told me my um, pressure was fifty-eight. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, Patty, you have to go tomorrow to the emergency room." or to a doctor or do something because that's not okay. And then that's when the next day I went to that emergency doctor and he told me it was 60 something and then climbed up to 70. But they couldn't explain why I wasn't in pain, crying and with migraine. I, I, I can explain why I didn't have any pain either. Okay. Nobody knows. I just wanna take a moment here, guys. This operation is expensive. You need to have the financial wealth and connections because famous rap stars or famous reality TV stars can get this procedure done, but they have access to money and resources. They can get this fixed right away. They are under co control all the time. If you are a student who saved $8,000 and got this procedure done, wrong. You will have to pay for follow-up appointments. 
if you are a person who doesn't have enough money to follow up with the procedure, don't. Because you are not going to be able to fix it. And another issue is, don't think that, oh, if there's something wrong, I will feel it. Like, you know, if there's like an inflammation or if my body rejects it, I will feel the pain and I will go see a doctor then. Patty did not feel any pain. It, and if she didn't want to get a LASIK surgery and talk to a doctor about it, she probably wouldn't have known that her pressure is that high and she might have ended up losing her entire sight. So this is something to warn you about. So let's just keep going with the boozle, boozle. Mila, can you help me please? Hi, beautiful dog. <laughs> Sorry, he, he's eating his bone. Okay, so you went to an emergency room. They suggested you to go to an emergency room, see it, go to a hospital. Were you able to find a professional to help you because the doctors here yeah. reject the patients? I, I didn't go to the emergency room. I find somebody, I, I mean, I found somebody who, who was on call the next morning. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's the one. It was an older guy. He helped me. And I remember he was telling, the nurse was telling it was talking to him, should I dilate her um, uh, pupil? And the doctor said, why? Don't even bother. Then don't dilate because it's plastic what she has. It's plastic. He, was, he wasn't happy. He, he was an older guy and he was wondering what this young, younger generation are doing this stupid, stupid stuff. So he wasn't happy. And then he said, you know, you know, you have to go to Salt Lake City right now, to Salt Lake City, the university. They have experts there. And they send uh, next day, I was, I went to the uh, University of Utah because they have a lot of experts and it's a really good university. Mm -hmm. But then from there, they send me back here. I'm telling you, liability, nobody wanted to take my case because these implants here are just too risky. They don't want to risk a lawsuit. Of course. And the guy's reaction and the nurse's reaction is pretty normal. The nurse probably assumed that these are on your own eyes because they, they don't know this. Here in the United States, they do not know if these implants exist. If these, this was in the verge of getting an FDA approval, guys, I talked to my ophthalmologist about this, there would be mm -hmm. conferences, they would get training. At least the people in the universities were, would be aware that something like this is coming to the market. But nobody knows about this that this exists uh, besides a couple of professionals that de dealt with this uh, implants before. And exactly. of course, like if they were in surprise, they had, they have never seen something like this. Okay. So what did the doctor say? Like, you know, did he like, because this is just our opinion, right? Like when you, when she saw like, okay, this might be FDA approved. Like, did you talk to him about like, you know, Hey, this is going to be FDA approved or anything like that. Oh because yeah. They laughed at me. They laughed. It's like, Patty, all this information with gathering, which it was like I said, like twelve doctors, mm -hmm. it's like up to the FDA. Patty, this is never ever gonna be approved. You have no idea how dangerous it is. It's, 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 it's never gonna be approved. They tell you that on the web page, but they're not. They're just lying to people to get them to do this. And yeah, yeah, and and. The, it's not going to. Thanks God. Thanks God. So, I need to clarify this. When you go to the sites about Bridecular, they do not yeah. say that, okay, we are going to be FDA approved tomorrow. They don't. They are saying that we are applying for CE, which is a FDA equivalent, equivalent of the European Union, and then mm -hmm. they are going to file for FDA. But of course, this creates a trust, sense of trust that, okay, eventually this will be FDA approved. So thank you so much for sharing what they have told you about this. So then this doctor in uh, University of Utah told you that you need to take the implants out and you don't oh, know what... Everybody. Yeah. So you don't know what is behind and he's and you are attached to this and you said that, you know, you you didn't want to take them out. How did you agree to take them out? Like, how did he convince you? It just, I beg him because that's so beautiful. It's just, you know what? Like you said, you get attached to them and the tension and they're beautiful. And it's just like, that you're precious. So I tried to talk all the doctors 
out of not getting them out. They said, Patty, do you want to get blind? Do you're going to get blind eventually. Your optic nerve so far, because they took like every single test or whatever in my head, mm -hmm. is fine, it's healthy. But if you keep them, your optic nerve is going to get damaged. And guess what happened when your optic nerve gets damaged? You lose your sight and we cannot report that. That one is irreversible. Maybe your eyes, we, we, we'll fix it, we'll try to do our best. Mm -hmm. But your optic nerve, forget about it. So you have to do it. And actually this one here, the, the one, uh, this one here, I talked to my doctor like two weeks ago. Can I keep it for like two months, please? Why did you want and, to keep it? Because one of your eyes is dark. Why, do, why did you want to keep one light eye? Because you love it so much? Like you said, you get attached to them. And I just don't want, oh my God, yeah, you get attached to them so bad, so bad. So I just, yeah. And also, I was so scared to see what's, what is behind this eye. Because I saw what is this behind this eye. It's just a missing chunk of my iris. And it looks really freaky. It looks horrible, horrible. It scares me. Like I said, my kids, they call it the alien eye. So I'm so also so scared to see what is behind this. It could be worse than this. I don't know. They don't know. Or better. So guys, I know this is a Skype call recording, so the quality is not that good. Like right now, Petty, like for, I, what I see from scre screen, you, you look like you have one dark brown eye and one blue eye. But Patty posted a video on her channel, Bright Ocular Implants Gone Wrong. I will link it down in the description box. There you can see more clear. As, as Patty mentioned, uh, she had hazel eyes, but uh, the implant and the inflammation, because here's what happens, guys as far as I researched, when your eye, like, you know, here's your eye, this is your cornea, and this is, uh, this is your iris, and this is your cornea. And my, when your eye inflates, this sh swallows like this, and the implant is sitting right in between. So when Patty had the inflammation, the implant started rubbing against her iris, and she lost her color, and her iris is damaged at this point. Is that uh, correct? You're right, exactly. And that's why it causes glaucoma because your eye, the implant is, is just blocking your drainage in your eye because your eye it just has fluids and your, it, mm -hmm. it goes, you know? And the implant is just, it's just blocking that. So your eye don't, doesn't have like the fluid it should be going, which is happening to me right now. So that's why I'm gonna have to get glaucoma surgery because my eye is not draining like it's supposed to be. And eventually, because of all that, I'm gonna get cataracts. Not right now, but eventually in a few years. Oh wow, so let's just get this straight. You have yeah. iris damage, you have glaucoma, and you have cataracts, yes. all three. I don't have cataracts yet. Okay. But with the time, it's gonna happen for sure. The mm -hmm. doctor told me in a few years, but you know the good part is like they have surgery for glaucoma which they, they said is not good it's not okay but if you have to do it whatever same thing for cataract they have surgery too they can fix it but it's just hurting your eyes in long term you of know it's each like surgery uh, and each exactly. surgery has its own complications too so each time yeah. you are risking your mm -hmm. eyes oh big time yeah so Two questions that come to my mind, and people are probably asking this, before they took the implant out, because you, they took the implant out because of the pressure, were you able to see through your, uh, is it your left or right? I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I'm confused, but the one that she took. Yeah, the, me left. Too. the left one is gone. Okay, so were you able to see clearly with your left eye before they took the implant out? Yeah, I, yeah, I could see really good with both eyes. The mm -hmm. one that took the implant out, I couldn't see that well at the beginning. It was just like, I was kind of blind, mm -hmm. but a little bit by little bit, my sight, it came back and back and back. Right now on the, uh, at the point, like I see the lights, like even driving at night, it looks like all the cars are coming into me, like lights everywhere. So I cannot drive at night so far with, with the eyes, uh, with the eyes, I took that implant out. So I could see a little better, but the lights, even like when I turn on a light, it's just explosion of lights. 
So you, you have extreme photo, ph photophobia. You are extremely yeah, sensitive to yeah. light. So, but besides, because on your video you mentioned that you lost fifty percent of your sight. Mm -hmm. Is it coming back? Like, is it going yes. up? Like mm -hmm. more than fifty percent, sixty, seventy. Yeah. So okay, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. At least you are not yeah. losing your sight, guys. Petty has kids. So can you imagine like risking being blind and like before I had this interview, just to clarify, Penny and I, we don't know each other before this. I just found her on YouTube and we just actually had our initial conversation this morning. I said, let's do an interview. And this is the first time that we are talking. Something that she said touched me. She's like, I was so worried that I'm not going to be able to see the faces of my kids. So it's a very, very huge risk. And I'm glad that you are getting your sight back. So another question that comes to mind, because I know like probably Bright Eckler is going to watch this video and like I'm trying to keep it as objective to protect both yeah. sides. Yeah. Uh, did you contact Bright Eckler when you find out that you had issues, like your eye pressure was 70, your yeah. doctor is saying that you need to take the implant out. Did yeah. you contact them at all? No, I didn't. No, why? 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 I mean, as I'm so mad at them. Mm -hmm. I'm just really mad because the damage is just... It's not about the money anymore. The money they took for me, like six, seven thousand dollars whatever, uh, that doctor took from me, that's not it. It's just the damage in my eyes, which is priceless. It, it is, is priceless. priceless. And... I just don't care about them anymore. And I'm doing this uh, video and the other one too I, I had on uh, YouTube to help people because if I wouldn't know for sure what what was going to happen, maybe I would have listened. I didn't want to listen because they didn't have these videos before, but yeah. I just want to help people to, Make them to be smart. That yes. That's because... my whole point. Right. My whole point. Because, guys, like, I know a bunch of young people are watching influencer videos. It might work out. Like, Tory Green's eyes are fine. Some of the influencers or some of the people who got this lenses, implants, they are doing fine. But you need to know so that far. you might not be as lucky. Mm -hmm. There is a risk. They list these complications here. Pay attention to this document. This is not something... Like, this is not a... Hair dye. This is not a push-up bra. This is not like an outfit that you are buying. This is not a wig. This is something that is being put your eyes. There are warnings. Pay attention. Do not close your ears like Petty did. So you did not decide not to contact them. But l let me just protect their site too. It is written here that if you have any issues, contact them. I, it is not guaranteed that they can fix it. Of course yeah. not. No one can guarantee it. And of course, in the United States, like doctors are going insane about this. Like, you're like, how could you do this? And you are under a lot of pressure and you ended up losing your precious implant. But of course, your uh, eye, eyesight is much more precious than this. So, with your, the one with the implant, you can see now. But of course, when, you, when they have the surgery, they do it one by one, I believe, because of the fact that this is going to come back. Then you are gonna lose this sight, and then it's gonna come back again, right? They don't know. They don't know because they actually here they give you the worst case scenario. Of course. Because they just been really careful. So it, it broke my heart when the doctor told me, Patty, you might be blind. You might be. I cannot tell you because you might need, like I said, a cornea transplant and like an iris, blah blah blah. So they just been. Careful, because, and he keep telling me, Patty, we don't know if you're going to lose part of your sight eventually or not. Mm -hmm. I, we don't know what's coming. So the doctor told me, Patty, just be patient and wait. Wait what's coming. Don't expect the best because we don't know. Just wait, yeah, no. wait. That's the issue with the not FDA approved procedures, guys. There are no yeah. case studies. There, the, the doctor is right. There is nothing that he can reference. Like, think it's about the law. Like when they are making uh, claims on the civil law or any other court, they are referring back to old cases. The doctor cannot give you a percentage of chance. He cannot tell you that, yeah, we saved your eyesight, you're okay, because this is something that they never dealt with before. This is so brand mm -hmm. new. 
So, of course, they gave you the uh, ver worst case scenario. And uh, you, you, you mentioned something that you don't know what is behind this one. So there's a good chance that maybe, if you think about the positive, that eye is completely healthy and you have nothing there. Like you're, you, it, when they take it out, you are going to have your iris, your old hazel, greenish eye. But you are going to have difference between two eyes now. Exactly. Let me tell you about this. Okay, uh, what you said about Tom Green, he's, he's good, he's fine until now. Yes. Just wait. Wait. Just be patient and wait. Okay. Okay, and about my... Uh, Yes, my creepy eye without half of my eye missing. What it told me is like, if the doctor told me not to uh, go ahead, uh, a step ahead of this, because I'm just a warrior, because it looks just horrible. It just look. Uh, it bothers you, horrible. the appearance bothers you. But anyway, so he told me there is a program, the name of the program is... Um, I forgot, but they they uh, human optics. Yes, human op optics. So they might if they can put my pressure low enough. And the doctor told me, Patty, we probably cannot do that. You probably won't be a good candidate for that because your pressure. You might be have to take pills the rest of your life and all that. So human optics, which is let me explain it to you guys, is like an iris implant. Approved here. Well, it's not approved for by the FDA yet. It's it might be clinical well, studies. It might be approved by the FDA, but now they're doing testing on people like uh, volunteers. Mm -hmm. So they have color, but it's not for aesthetics like I did. It's just for people like with the form eyes like I have, and uh, like uh, sensitive to like um, to lights and. If you put them on, they can help you with that. But they have uh, some requirements, which so far I'm not I'm not a candidate. So I need to wait, wait, and wait, and wait. And I'm desperate for covering my eyes, so and then I won't see the bright lights anymore. Right. We'll see. I also made a research about this company because when you search for artificial iris implants, the uh, human optics also comes yeah. into play. And when you look at their videos, their iris implants are much more realistic. I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. They are much more realistic because I saw, I can link it down in the description box, this woman who, or she originally has blue eyes, got a blue implant that looks very extremely realistic. But when you go into yeah. human optics website, they clearly claim they are not going to take patients or applications or exactly. sell their product for cosmetic reasons. So yeah. for Patty, even if she asks and begs them, they are not going to give her blue, green eyes. They are going to match whatever she has on the mm -hmm. other eye. Hazel, yes. brown, whatever. Mm -hmm. So just putting it out there. And actually, the original manufacturing of the new, uh, not new iris, sorry, I don't want to associate new iris with bright color. They are completely different entities. <laughs> Uh, bright ocular was the same case. Treat photosensitivity on uh, iris anomaly, but they opened it to the market for uh, cosmetic surgery and uh, when you insert it to a healthy eye. This is, this is the reason why no ophthalmologist in the United States is going to approve it. You have a healthy eye, you are risking it for cosmetic reasons. Benefits versus risk do not add up. In a rational doctor mindset, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. So... Okay, do you know of any other patients? Because here's my issue, guys. I also mentioned this when I was recording the intro. I found Patty by accident. I was going to, I, I was searching for Tori Green's video and I was looking at the latest uploads and I found Patty. Her uh, video is not gonna come first because she doesn't have my, my subscribers or views. And that's why I'm trying to get the word out there with my audience. Uh, I know I have a small channel too, but I'm trying my best. Um, do you know any other people that face these issues? Because you cannot find them. When you research online, it most of the people seems to be having positive experience, as you said, so far. We don't know what's going to come next. But maybe if they follow the protocol, nothing is going to happen. We don't know. The, the key is we don't know. <laughs> so here they say that their success story, success rate is 98%. 
When I search bright ocular, I like when you Google, you need to know how to Google bright ocular minus brightocular.com. So that way you get the results outside of the brightocular.com. I found certain websites and articles they said that are published by United States, the Association of Cataract Surgeons and etc. They mm -hmm. claim that the success rate is much lower than 98. They say it's 50-50 or less than that, that the <laughs> surgery must be successful. But again, for objectivity purposes, when people get this surgery done, they only go to doctors and explain their condition when they have problems. Uh -huh. If Patty did not have any problem with her eyes, they would not have a record of her. No one would know that she has eye implants. So exactly, yeah. there, are, there is a bunch of people, brighter color claims. When I say claim, it doesn't mean that it's a wrong claim. I just don't have yeah. evidence Ugh. that more than 3,000 people got this surgery. And we only have a few examples of people who come forth and talk about the problems, Patty being one. So... Then you look at the ratings, ra rates of the success rate. I don't know who to trust, Bridecular or the United States doctors, because United States doctors do not know the entire case. So what is the problem is Bridecular did not open this study to evaluation. That's a mistake or intentional. I'm not sure. So do you know anyone else besides you? Are you in contact with anybody else that is having sim similar problems? Yes. Uh, when I did this... Um... I contact somebody else online, like you contact me, mm -hmm. she put a video there, and she gave me her phone number, and she said, everything, everything is okay, go ahead, blah, 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 so she was my inspiration to do it, she gave me strength to do it, and I just keep talking to her like, I'm so scared, because that, when they did it, I was completely blind for like a week. I couldn't see. I was trapped in my in my head. So, so it was really scary because. Go ahead. Clarification. So this person is a is a person who also got the implants out, right? It's not like you know putting the implants in. It's getting them out. No, she 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 had them in before before uh, I met her. I mean. Okay. Actually, the doctor's office. Um, no, the doctor's office. I mean the uh, internet. Uh, I Google her. Mm -hmm. And she already did the implants like six months before. Uh -huh. And like I said, I... Oh, okay. So this was... Uh, like... I Facebook. Actually, I Facebook her. She gave me her phone number. And then we're doing the WhatsApp thing. Because like I said, I was really scared. Really scared. This I was, was like, before oh you God. got the implants in, Patty? Like before you got the implants in? Did you talk to this person or after? Before and after. Both. Before and after. Okay. Yeah. Did she have so issues? So she was encouraging me, like, Patty, it's okay. But she just got them, like, six months ago. So, mm -hmm. and then, actually, like, a couple of weeks ago, right after I took my implant, I texted her on WhatsApp, and I sent her the video I put on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And she said, Patty, I'm just going to go ahead and take them out because I'm having a lot of problems with them, too. And I'm really scared. And she just trying to ignore them, and I said, you know what, Don't get them out, get them out, please, please do it, please do it, and she saw my video, and actually, let me tell you something, my doctor here, uh, I was filming him, and he made a video just for her, and she, he said her name, and I pointed the camera at him, and he said, blah, 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 all that, I have that video on my phone, but I cannot put it on YouTube because I need to ask him if it's, it's okay. It's It's his video, yes. So he was talking to her because I asked the doctor and he's telling me about the danger of that, that, that. And then she replied to me like, thank you, Patty. I think I'm going to take them out. Yeah. So, yeah. Guys, here's the thing with this. If you are going to get this done, because I know some of you are like very passionate about this and it's not going to stop you. Or maybe you got them two weeks ago. Do not ignore the symptoms. If you ignore the symptoms, you are going to end up like Patty. But Patty was lucky. She's getting her eyes, eyesight back. You might be worse. No one knows. That's the issue. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, any final words for people who are considering this procedure or who has done this? Anything that you, else that you want to share that we did not cover in this conversation? 
Well, I just want to tell people to don't be in denial if you have them or if you want them. Just listen to us because you know what? I'm not doing this for fun. I'm not doing this for to hurt people. I'm doing this because it happened to me and it hurts so bad. Like I said, it's just, it's just horrible. I'm just trying to help people. Then the other uh, hand is like, if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. Follow your heart. But you're taking a big risk. Big risk. Know the risks. That's the thing. And that's what they say yeah. too. Know the risks. Act accordingly. If you have any yeah. issues, I don't know. Contact Bridecular or contact your ophthalmologist right away. Do not wait. It just makes things worse. Eyes are very sensitive. You are risking your sight. It's one of our main sensitivity organs. And it's maybe like the most important one. It, to me, it's one of the most important ones. So do not gamble with it. We cannot, as I mentioned at the intro, Patty and I, we are not medically educated people on this case. We cannot tell people to get these implants or not get these implants. I don't know. Exactly. We are talking mm -hmm. about Patty's experience. Just know that there is a risk. Read this yeah. document truly. Contact people. Ask your ophthalmologist. Ask a laser technician. Because you need someone to take care of you when you come back home. Unless... Patty is actually lucky. She could travel back and forth to Mexico. We are close to Mexico. It's her home. So it was easier for her. If, especially if you are in the United States and traveling to Tunisia, India, Turkey. It's not something that somewhere that you can go back and forth. You need to have someone here to take care of you. If you do not have that, don't do that. Don't do this procedure. That's all, all I can say. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Patty. Uh, that's all the questions that I had. Mm -hmm. But let me just ask one thing, because I know this is the question that is going to come up, because I saw the comments under your video. Mm -hmm. Do you think the complications could be avoided if you contacted no. Bride Ocular? If you got them out, like you said that your pressure is, was up and down, up and down. If, well. this, if this was a warning sign, signal if you took them out one year ago do you think the complications could be avoided well maybe that many complications like as many as i have now mm -hmm. probably because you wouldn't be rubbing my eye for that long i wouldn't have glaucoma that long yes yes but when i just put them i didn't want to take them out and it was just it wasn't that bad it was just a little bit by little bit and also, let me tell you, when you said, if you have complications a while ago to people, it's not if, you are going to take them out. Yeah. So it's not like if, mm -hmm. for sure, give it time and you will, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's just a matter of time, for sure, all the time, all the time. Did you, did you touched a very good subject, attachment to these implants. Because the people yeah. who got these implants, they value realism. They want them to look real. Because there are colored contacts, they are not then they are not enough. People want these done so that they can claim as their own. Exactly. I did. Do not lie to people about your eye color. I keep saying this when it comes to colored contacts too. Because like Patty here, you might end up removing them. You might end up having to have to remove these implants. Do not lie about your eye color. Do not get these implants in just because you want to tell people, oh, yes, these are my natural eyes, because you might end up losing them. Do Let me tell you, I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's like <laughs> I used to go to, uh, like my same bar I went with my eyes, and everybody was, wow, wow. I'm not daring to go back there anymore. Because my eyes, it like, Different. and even I went today to pick up my kids at school, and the secretaries and the people that are looking at me like, double take, like, what happened with those beautiful eyes? And they're looking at the ugly eye. So I was like, it hurts. They won't ask. They they won't ask. But you can tell they're looking like, oh, she used to have blue eyes, beautiful, whatever. Now she doesn't. 
And my kids, my, the, the mom of my kids are like looking at me and it's just so embarrassing because I never told anybody they're fake. I just pretended like they're mine. Now I don't have them. So I just want to hide like I want to disappear because I was lying. Well, no lying. I just You're not saying it. About that. You did not feel yeah. the need to disclose anything because no one asked because they look real. Exactly. So but now this, it's embarrassing because, yeah. This is actually takes me back to years ago. Patty, maybe you do not know this, but I was in the uh, contact lens forums, and the first pioneer surgery to this was new color iris. They are not associated with bright color. Some claim they are. I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. Maybe next video. But the, the guy, Mark Alpha, who also appeared in Doctor's Show uh, uh -huh. in the United States. It's a show that is being, in fact, uh, being uh, broadcasted here in the United States. Mm -hmm. The main host, I don't know his name, the blonde guy, he warned people that, you know, if your eyes looked bad, I wouldn't feel, need, feel the need to warn people because no one would do it. But they look beautiful. That's why I want to warn people about this. You will get attached. They are going to look beautiful. And you might end up losing them. So don't get attached. If you got these implants done, there's nothing you can do. The damage is done. Keep checking your eyes. And take them out if needed. If you are still considering, know the complications. And that's where I'm going to end the video. Thank you so much again for your time, Patty. I really appreciate it. And I will be in touch with you. And I will follow your story. I'm very interested in this. And hopefully you will gain your eyesight back. And I'm sure everybody will agree. Eye color alone cannot make you beautiful or ugly. I know it's psychological. You got yeah, attached to these. Mm -hmm. You are still very beautiful. Blue eyes, no blue eyes. There are very beautiful people with blue eyes, and there are very ugly people with blue eyes. Well, yeah. Same goes for brown, hazel, any color. So please try not to get attached to your color contacts, your iris implants, or anything like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. And you guys, be super smart, please. Be smart.